she is just an amalgamation of everything that is righteous. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things we learned in the Janet Jackson documentary. I do what I do because it's something that I feel at that moment. I mean, I was happy. For this list, we're looking at revelations from this two-part documentary about the iconic singer. What was your biggest takeaway from the documentary? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. The prejudice she faced as a child. As the Jackson 5 took off with hit singles like I Want You Back, Janet moved with her family from their two-bedroom house in Gary, Indiana to Encino, a predominantly white neighborhood in Los Angeles. Unfortunately, the Jacksons weren't met with a warm reception. I think the Jacksons were the first black family to move in, so it was a little controversial at that time. In the documentary, Janet reflected on being called an unforgivable word as somebody drove by. She endured racism at school as well, with some kids and even teachers touching her skin and hair, asking questions that were equally absurd and awful. It's like, does that come off? No. Does yours? <laughs> Although there was a petition to remove the Jacksons, their family remained in L.A. As unconventional as her childhood was, incidents like this are sadly all too relatable for people of color. Be told to go back home to your country and feeling it at school with some of the teachers and some of the kids. Number 9. Her relationship with Tupac on Poetic Justice Jackson made the leap to feature film with Poetic Justice, for which she received a Best Original Song Oscar nomination. She also shared the screen with future Oscar winner Regina King and the late Tupac Shakur. I think they were both impressed with each other, but I don't feel like either one of them wanted to let the other know. While Q-Tip got to kiss Jackson about 20 times while doing 20 takes, she shared most of her romantic scenes with Shakur. Their on-screen rapport was so believable that one might assume that they were more than co-stars. Although Jackson and Shakur were never romantically linked behind the scenes, King says that there was definitely a bit of chemistry between the two. You could cut the air in the room at times. King noted, though, that Jackson was in a committed relationship with Renee Elizondo Jr. Still, imagine the alternate universe where Justice and Lucky became a real-life couple. What do you want from me? You can start with your phone number. Number 8. She Never Had a Secret Baby In January 2017, a 50-year-old Janet Jackson gave birth to her first child, Issa Almana. In the 80s, however, a rumor surfaced that Jackson had a secret child with James DeBarge. Nobody saw a baby. I mean, she was there with us all day, every day. Where was the baby? Where? where who? Where? They were saying that I was raising her daughter. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Jackson's weight gain at the time led some to believe she was pregnant. Actually, it was the opposite. Jackson was taking birth control pills and weight gain was a side effect. Nevertheless, the rumor spawned various theories about the secret baby's identity and whereabouts. Although it should probably go without saying by now, Jackson set the record straight once and for all. The secret baby rumor is precisely that. A rumor and nothing more. I don't like when journalists, when they try to trip you up like that. I don't like the weight of that negativity around me. Despite her difficult history with DeBarge, Jackson noted that she wouldn't have hidden something like that from him. How could I keep a child from their father? I could never do that. That's not right. Number 7. How Addiction Affected Her First Two Marriages When it comes to relationships, somehow I'm attracted to people that use drugs. When Jackson eloped with James DeBarge, the marriage was initially kept hush-hush. Not long after, DeBarge disappeared on their wedding night, and the 18-year-old Jackson realized that her husband had a drug problem. Jackson spent her nights searching the streets for DeBarge, with conflict inevitably ensuing at home. Taking a toll on Jackson's work and well-being, the marriage lasted just over a year. I would find the pills, and I would take them and try to flush them down the toilet, and we would be rolling around on the floor fighting for them. I mean, what, it's not a life for anyone. Jackson went on to marry Renee Elizondo Jr., who proposed on a beach in the rain. In addition to directing some of her videos, Elizondo recorded almost a decade of Jackson's life. Behind the constantly rolling camera, Elizondo was controlling and had a painkiller problem. And that's when I said, you know what? I said, I don't want to do this anymore. Ultimately, Jackson's second marriage ended in 2000. Number 6. 
her struggles with body issues. On the sitcom Good Times, Jackson played Penny, a little girl who's mistreated and abandoned by her mother. In reality, Jackson was also dealing with serious problems. Her time on the comedy series marked the beginning of her history with body issues. If you weren't in the public eye the whole time, would you feel differently? I probably would have wound up not having a problem. Entering puberty at an early age, Jackson's chest was bound to make her appear younger. Jackson also opened up about being a, quote, emotional eater. When I get stressed or something's really bothering me, it comforts me. And I'll try and do things to pull it down, bring it down, try to diet, but I can't keep it down. Michael didn't help the situation, calling Janet heavy and comparing her to barnyard animals. Jackson added that Michael didn't mean to hurt her, as it's not uncommon for siblings to make fun of each other. Regardless, these insensitive comments only added to the insecurity she was experiencing. When you have someone say, you're too heavy, even if it was out of love, it affects you. Number five, thriller marked a falling out between Janet and Michael. The Jackson household's youngest child, Janet struggled to find her place in the family. As much as she loved her brothers, they were constantly working. You felt like a bit of an outcast? I just felt... Yeah. Where, where, where do I fit in? Despite this distance, Janet developed an especially close bond with Randy and Michael. She fondly remembered sitting in the car with Michael, listening to his albums whenever a new one hit. Around the time Thriller came out, the siblings started to part ways. Janet was also branching out as her eponymous debut album released that same year. She had hoped to keep her last name out of its title, calling it simply Janet. I wanted them to accept me for me, to be interested in this for me not because I was the brother or sister of, but that's everything that this industry takes advantage of. And they want to play on that. And I, I didn't want that. However, escaping the Jackson name would be an ongoing struggle on her way to becoming the then highest paid recording artist ever. I wanted my own identity. I didn't want people to pick up this body of music because of my last name. Number four, her father's controlling ways. Had she come from a different family, Janet Jackson might have pursued her ambition to become a lawyer. After she showcased musical talent, her father, Joe Jackson, insisted that she continue the family's singing trajectory. I don't ever remember being asked. I um, just remember being put into it. This was far from the only life-changing decision that Joe made for his daughter. Janet wasn't keen on playing Cleo Hewitt on fame especially given her marriage to DeBarge, but Joe felt it would be the best move for her. I didn't want to do the show. The kids were great, but I just didn't, I didn't want to do that. I did it for my father. As demanding as Joe was, Janet still views her deceased father as a good-hearted and protective parent. She also acknowledged that the Jacksons wouldn't have achieved such levels of success without his disciplinary ways. It was tough at times. There was nothing easy about it, period. But when you see where we came from and see where we are now, we owe so much to my father. To take control of her life, though, Janet eventually needed to drop her father as a manager. Number three, how the allegations against Michael affected her. Just as Michael was the face of Pepsi for a period, Janet nearly introduced Coca-Cola to a new generation. The deal fell through when the first allegation against Michael surfaced. When that came out, Coca-Cola said, no, thank you. Michael Jackson remains a divisive figure, but Janet stated in the documentary that she, quote, never thought he was guilty. Janet was seen as, quote, guilty by association, however. It's tragic that it's affected you as well. Yeah, but that's the way the world is. Instead of distancing herself, Janet stayed at Michael's ranch to show her support with the rest of the family. Michael and Janet would even collaborate on Scream, although this experience wasn't without complications. They didn't want me on set. I felt like they were trying to make it very competitive between the two of us. Aside from going over budget, the siblings were separated for much of the production. Although it seemed like an opportunity to recapture the good old days, Janet could feel like she was battling Mike. I wanted it to feel like old times between he and I, and it didn't. Old times had long passed. Number two, the aftermath of Super Bowl 38. 
Few live television events ignited more headlines than Jackson's wardrobe malfunction with Justin Timberlake at the 2004 Super Bowl halftime show. In retrospect, the controversy not only feels overblown, but Jackson really deserved better from the media and politicians. So did her family, who were also harassed over the performance. It was everywhere. And people wishing ill yeah. of you. People coming up to my brothers and saying things wishing I would be put away. Jackson revealed that Timberlake reached out amid the scandal, asking if he should make a statement. Jackson advised him against doing so, not wanting any drama for him. They're aiming all of this at me. So I said, just, I said, I, if I were you, I wouldn't say anything. Although Timberlake was still invited to that year's Grammys, Jackson's invitation was rescinded. As difficult as this chapter was, Jackson would persevere. So I just stayed focused in my, my, my work, stayed close to friends, stayed in touch with family, and that was enough for me to pull through. Janet declined Timberlake's offer to reunite at Super Bowl 52, but she says that the two are good friends who have moved past the incident. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. She had trouble making friends. When Jackson is your surname, people can be more drawn to fame than friendship. Is it who you are or, or what you are? Do they just want to be your friend because you're Janet Jackson or Michael Jackson's sister? Or do they want to be your friend because they really like you deep down inside your, your, your personality? Argument with producers. Tensions got heated during recording sessions for Rhythm Nation 1814. I don't need this. I don't need you guys' attitude. I mean, this has just gone too far. I'm going home. I'm leaving the I'm sitting over I'm sick of this. David Bowie offered a young Michael and Randy illicit substances. At least, that's what Randy claims. We just look at each other we're like, no. We didn't know what it was. She's like, no, no, thank you. Gary, the guy in Again, asked if she had a boyfriend. She did, and he was the director. He said, oh, God, how do you feel about all this and us kissing and touching and me putting my hand in your pants? I said, actually, he's the one who's telling us what to do. Her risque Rolling Stone cover. Many found it bold, although her family wasn't thrilled. With everybody else, it probably was no big issue. But I'm talking about my family, because that's not how we were brought up. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, her final moments with Michael. We were all shocked when Michael Jackson died at age 50 on June 25, 2009. But few were in a greater state of disbelief than Janet. At first, it just it didn't seem true. It didn't seem real. I couldn't believe it. Filming Why Did I Get Married 2 when the news broke, Janet eventually accepted that her brother was gone. In an especially emotional moment, Janet reflected on her final memory of Michael. They attended a surprise party for their parents with the other Jacksons. And he was sitting next to me. He was laughing like crazy. And he had that deep laugh. Michael appeared to be in good spirits throughout before he and Janet parted with three words. I love you. Neither realized that these would be the last words that they ever exchanged. While Janet's relationship with Michael had its ups and downs, she takes solace in knowing that things ended on a loving note. But at least I have that. At least I have that. I miss him. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.